Welcome everyone, and today we're going to go through Black Myth Wukong Chapter 6. We're going to also go through how to get the secret ending, so let's dive right in. The first optional hidden boss is Jiao Long of Waves, and you'll find him immediately after defeating the Supreme Inspector. Once you've unlocked the Somersault Cloud Spell, head towards the gap beneath the giant chains in front of you, fly across the gap and drop straight down into the lake below. As soon as you touch the water, Jiao Long will attack from the water. He is relatively easy boss compared to what's coming up next, so don't worry too much. His attacks are slow and easy to dodge. Next boss is a Son of Stones, a massive stone titan resting on the edge of a cliff overlooking the foothills. After you've defeated Jiao Long, fly upward and face across from the Supreme Inspector Arena. Look ahead and slightly left and you'll see him sitting quietly. Land behind him and hit his legs or back to him initiate the fight. He'll start slowly by swiping at you but once he realises you're a threat he'll stand up to fight properly. The Son of Stones is a lumbering giant. His attacks are slow but pack a huge punch. Stay close to his legs, dodge his attacks and don't try to immobilise him because it won't work. Also look out for his lightning area of effect attack. When he charges it, dodge the blast because after he uses it he'll collapse to the ground from exhaustion. This is your moment, charge up your heavy tacks and deal massive damage while he's down. Now we move on to the Poison Chief mini bosses. There are four of these enemies hidden around the foothills in chapter 6. They blend into the environment, disguising themselves as large rocks until you get close. You only need to defeat one for the his page, so we will only go over the first one. To find the first Poison Chief, head to the lake near Jiao Long where you fought him. Then head right, following the cliff where the Son of Stones was resting. And you will see a circular clearing with a rock in the middle. As you approach it will transform and attack. You do have to get off your clouds to make sure he transforms. The Poison Chiefs are not too difficult to defeat, but their poison bombs deal massive damage. The explosion from these bombs are more dangerous than the attacks themselves, so keep your distance and dodge carefully. Use cloud step to get in close, land some quick hits and then back away before the explosions hit. Be patient, this fight is about avoiding damage rather than rushing in. Slowly but surely wins the race. Next we hunt down Lang Baba, final giant frog boss in the game and the key to completing the tadpole side quest. You'll find that Lang Baba near the Rhino Watch slope pressed up against the bottom of the cliff. This frog is no pushover, along with his usual tongue attacks and kicks, Lang Bao Bao can enter stone skin form, which repels most melee damage. It's best to wait out this transformation rather than attacking. Your hits will almost do no damage while his stone skin is active. A bit like when you use rock card. Once his stone form wears off, that's your moment. Use your most powerful attacks and immobilize to bring him down quickly. Keep your distance when necessary and only go in for heavy damage when he's vulnerable. Once you're defeated Lang Bao Bao, this gives you the final tadpole. You need to upgrade your spirit at the shrine. This will transfer your Ba Li Ga Lang spirit spirit into Baba Lang Lang, the game's only mythical level spirit, allowing you to take the form of any of the frogs you faced at random. With this powerful spirit, you are more prepared than ever for the challenges ahead. The next optional boss is the Water Wood Beast Boss. You'll find the oversized hippo-like monster in the lake behind the Mantis Catching Swamp Shrine. The fight begins when you approach the patch of bubbling water in the center of the lake. This water wood beast is much more powerful than the smaller one scattered through the foothills. Its submerged attack deals enormous damage to so avoid getting too close while it's underwater. Stick near its back legs when it's above water and use immobilize to keep it locked in place for as long as possible. It has a bit of a janky hitbox around its maw so be cautious. A few well placed hits will stagger the beast giving you time to deal heavy damage. Once it's staggered go all out with your best attacks with enough pressure that this beast will eventually fall clearing yet another boss in your path. Next is the largest boss in Black Myth Wukong and it's one we've been building up to over our previous videos by collecting the Skadar items. Once you have all four Skadar items, fly up past where the Son of Stones boss was and through the cliffs ahead to the right to reach this hidden colossus. Giant Shigandung is so large that a standard fight is impossible. Instead, you'll need to dodge its massive arm swings and wait for an opportunity to strike. Focus on the blue crystals embedded in its arms. 
when it leaves its arms on the ground to rush in and attack these crystals. Each shattered crystal deals significant damage to the boss. Once you break enough, a cutscene will play. After the cutscene, you'll be rewarded with the final Skadar item, the Skadar of Consciousness. Take all five Skadars to Zoo Dog in Zodiac Village to receive a celestial pill that boosts all your attributes. Now for the moment, most of you are probably watching this video is the path to unlock the true ending and it leads to the hardest boss fight in the game. To do so you must complete several critical steps throughout the game and we're going to go through them. First step is in chapter 1 where you have to ring the three bells and unlock the ancient Guayan temple where you'll defeat Elder Jinji to receive the fireproof mantle vessel. In chapter 2 you'll have to complete the drunken boar questline to unlock the kingdom of Shihali and defeat Fuban for the wind tamer vessel. In chapter 3 you have to defeat the green capped Matalist to get an extra spell. Then in chapter 4 you'll have to defeat the Venom Deus twice to access Purple Cloud Mountain and defeat Duskvale to earn the Weaver's Needle Vessel. In Chapter 5 you'll have to clear out the 5 Elemental Carts to get access to Bishy Cave and defeat the Bishy Golden Eye Beast. And finally you'll have to defeat the Yaksha King in Chapter 5 for the Plantain Ban Vessel. If you haven't done any of these we have all these side quests in our previous videos. Once you completed all these head to the Great Pagoda in the Pagoda Realm region of chapter 3. Approach the little Buddha inside the Great Pagoda room to unlock Mount Mai and on to confront the hardest boss in the game. Erling Shen, as you may remember, is from the prologue and he is a lot harder here. Erlong Shen is a three phase boss fight, each phase more difficult than the last. In this fight Erlong has a poise meter as well that lets him resist most of your attacks until it's broken. You'll need to chip away at his poise before you can deal any real damage. His combos are long and devastating and in phase 2 he brings out a lightning infused axe. Stay alert he's quick and unpredictable. Your best tool here is the planting van vessel. It removes his poise quickly opening him up for heavy attacks every time you use it. Pick up the Jingyu Bang staff from the water curtain cave of chapter 6 before you attempt this. This can be done on the main path just before the final boss so pick it up and then head back to fight Erlang. It's the best weapon in the game on your first playthrough. Also I suggest for your spell use a fully upgraded ring of fire to save gourd users and build focus as well. I myself use the transformation red tides for scorch damage and the spirit flint vanguard. This spirit lets Wukong pummel enemies with stone fists stacking scorch bane and dealing burn damage over time but also equipping it boosts your scorch damage and improves burn resistance. So with these two combined you can deal massive damage plus Erlink will adapt and use the same bane power you use. So if you use fire, he will use fire. If you use ice, he will use ice. So with the flint vanguard this improves the resistance when he adapts for using Scorch Bane. When you do use the transformation, Erling will also transform into a White Tiger for a single leap attack. If it hits you, you'll de-transform, so dodge it and then he'll transform back, allowing you to make use of your transformation properly. Use Cloud Step often to avoid damage and heal, especially to avoid the barrage of projectiles in the third phase. Also to help, I use the Amplification Pellets, Essence, Decoration and Enhance tiger subduing pellets and also as a safety net soul remigration hill after the first fight with erling shen you'll face an entirely new challenge the four heavenly kings these towering figures arrive to challenge you in what feels like a victory lap after the grueling erling fight while you are outnumbered the good news is that the heavenly kings don't deal as much damage individually use your heavy attack strategically as each time you land a blow your heal portion of your health. Focus on one king at a time and with each one you defeat the fight becomes easier. It's important to stay aggressive in this fight. Heavy attacks will keep your health topped up and the more you fight the stronger you become. With persistence and well timed dodges the four heavenly kings will fall bringing you one step closer to the true ending. But unfortunately when the four heavenly kings fall the fight still isn't over. Erling Shim returns this time in his true form matching your stone monkey transformation. This is the last 
and hardest phase of this part. At a certain point in the fight, Erling Shen will unleash a powerful fire breath attacking that seemingly burns away all of your health. Don't worry, this is scripted. You'll soon heal back to full and from this point onwards your attacks will deal even more damage. Now just keep you cool, dodge his powerful strikes and unleash your most devastating attacks. When you finally bring him down, you'll be rewarded with one of the best weapons in the game, the Trite Point Double Edge Spear and also the most powerful transformation, Stone Monkey Transformation. With abilities like Primal Punch and Earth Shattering Slam, you're now practically unstoppable with this transformation. And that worries is how you unlock all the secrets in Chapter 6 and get onto the path to the true ending. Now that you have the Tri Point Spear and Stone Monkey Transformation in hand, you're ready to take on the final boss of the game. If you found this guide helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe and hit notification bell for more in-depth vibes. Thanks for watching and good luck on your journey to victory.